the dish with D. That's me. Thank you for this video. It's an extra bonus video this week. I was making this bread and I thought I'd film it in case it turned out. Well, it did. It is a pumpkin banana bread. You heard that right. Look at that. Pumpkin bananas. I subbed applesauce for the oil. I did add some non-fat Greek yogurt because I did use cassava flour. I wanted it to be gluten-free, but you absolutely can use regular all-purpose flour. The directions will have all-purpose flour in there. If you want to add a couple tablespoons of yogurt, feel free. If you think your batter could use it. But we're going to get started and we're going to make this delicious two-point a slice pumpkin banana bread with lilies. Um, if you're on the diabetic plan, I do have the link down below for the Weight Watchers app. So it'll it may adjust the points for your plan because there's, like I said, there's two bananas and there's a half cup of unsweetened applesauce in there. So it might adjust your points, but the WW app is linked. And so is the written recipe to dishwithd.com. So without further ado, let's get started. Seasons are abundant, my lovelies. It's time for some bread. I've never made a bread like this before. We had bananas going south, and you'll see how south they were. And had pumpkin that I needed to use up. And I thought, is there such a thing as a pumpkin banana bread? Well, there is. And it's fantastic. <laughs> Even comes out for my gluten-free lovelies. You could do this gluten-free. You're welcome. So let's go and see how, she, see how she fares. All right, we have some bananas that, get need, that need to get used up. And some pumpkin sitting here. So I thought... Let's make a pumpkin banana bread. And lo and behold, it calls for two bananas. So how lucky are we? So I'm going to peel them and we're going to match them. These are so super duper ripe, which is going to yield a more sweet product, right? So let's get these in our bowl. Yeah, we don't want the skins in there, do we? Now you could like, Put your wet ingredients in a different bowl and your dry ingredients. I, I just tend to throw them all together. It's how I roll. The beauty of this, <clears throat> when they're this ripe, they mash super easily. And I'm gonna sub out the oil for applesauce. So this is quite the fall bread, isn't it? Pumpkin, banana, apples, and I'm going to tell you, the only thing you have to count in this recipe on Weight Watchers is the flour. And some some of the sweetener. I mean, I don't know if monk fruit is zero points for amount, any amount anymore. I, I honestly don't worry about it, but I know some people do. So I will put it in the builder just to see if it comes out for that amount of sugar. And there's white and brown in this one. Now, could you use regular sugar? Sure. Could you use honey? Sure. Could you use maple syrup? Sure. That's how you roll, that is how you roll. Okay, so all our bananas are mashed. I'm gonna add our unsweetened applesauce. Half a cup, which is one of these great little cups. That's why I love keeping these on hand because most times it's a half cup. Now I'm using cassava flour because it's gluten free, but the recipe will have all purpose flour. So in case you're wondering, like, oh my God, Dee, you're not having gluten free. And our two eggs. Now, should you crack them separately? You sure should. Am I? Absolutely not. <laughs> so I roll here. We don't put any airs on this channel, do we? Like I said, if I was doing being professional, I would be on the Food Network. But I'm here on YouTube. All right. I know cassava flour can tend to be a little bit drier than regular flour, so if I need to adjust, I'll just add some like non fat Greek yogurt or something. All right, how much? Again, we're going to do. I'm not sure how much is here, so we should measure it, but I really don't know. <laughs> you know what? There's not that much to worry about being left, so we'll use all of it. 
So it should be a cup of pumpkin, and that's about what I have. Into the pool she goes. This was a last minute. I need to get rid of those bananas, and I thought, why not film it? I will tell you that traditionally my cooking videos do not do well. Maybe this is why. <sighs> mm, I never thought about it. Maybe because I'm too much of a hot mess. <laughs> All right. Some vanilla extract. Just a teaspoon. Or a little bit more. We're going to put our pumpkin pie spice. Two teaspoons. This is going to go in a loaf pan. For your baking pleasure. And, oh, I don't want to off the camera. Whoops. And some cinnamon. Half a teaspoon. Again, you could adjust these. You don't have pumpkin pie spice. Just use cinnamon. And our sugar. I have my half cup here somewhere. Oh, hiding, are you? So it's gonna be half a cup of white sugar and half a cup of brown sugar. Ooh, did you get that little sugar shower? And I am using granular monk fruit and brown. Actually, I'm using sweet complete from Trevia and brown. And we're going to do one teaspoon of baking soda. I'm not sure why it's soda, but you know what? And half a teaspoon of baking powder. So we're going to do it both. Not sure why that is, but you know what? I'm a little follower. So that was the baking powder, and this is the baking soda. Everything will be on Dish with D. You don't have to worry about trying to follow me. Let's see if I have everything I have. Salt, of course. We need salt. Okay. Okay. That's all she wrote, other than the flour. We're going to get these mixed. Then we'll grab our flour. Make sure that brown sugar doesn't clump. Our oven should be preheated to 350. And you can grease and flour your nine by five inch loaf pan. All right. Now we're gonna put our flour. That's two cups of all purpose flour. A lot of people like that pizza flour. I'm using, like I said, I'm using the cassava gluten-free flour, but again, you don't need to know that because it looks like flour to you. Okay. Whew. Well, that's it. But to combine this well, can I do this all in one take? Probably not, because I didn't, I'll be honest, I didn't grease some flour in my pan yet. <clears throat> Nor did I preheat my oven. So. Now this, see, this is the cassava flour. This is a little bit drier. It sometimes requires a little bit more liquid. You can see how thick this is. I'm getting a workout. Oh my goodness. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add that yogurt that I have sitting out here because I have a little bit left. And I'm just going to throw it in. Not all of it, but some. I'm going to put a little extra moistness that the cassava flour might need. 
have a couple of glugs, a couple of tablespoons. Again, that is totally optional. You don't need to add that. I mean, you can if you want it. I don't think it'll hurt anything. Help loosen up that flour a bit. All right, I'm gonna grease my pan and preheat my oven. And I'll be right back. Here she is in our prepared pan. It's a lot, I don't know. Is it the cassava flour that does it? That's huge. Well, it does say it bakes for 50 to 60 minutes, so. Now you could mix the lilies in if you choose. I'm just going to put it on top. You know, you could put nuts too. Walnuts would be really good because, you know, banana bread and walnuts. So, but I'm just putting some lilies. Just take it with that little hint of chocolate, but not really. Put them down. So we're going to bake this, like I said, for 55 to 60 minutes. It's just a lot of, it's a lot of bread here, isn't it? Press them down. And uh, we'll come back and revisit this baby when she's done. And I'll definitely let you know how long she baked for, but look at the size. It's pretty dense bread. She baked for 55 minutes. Pulled her out of the oven. Like I said, this is with cassava flour, so that's not shocking that it's cracked. I don't think regular flour would do that, but I'm gonna let it cool here for five minutes. And then we'll invert her and let her cool completely on a rack. She does look good though, doesn't she? I get told I call my food she. I think when it's pretty, it's she. And when it's bold and powerful, it's a he. It's just me. But that's our bread. All right, she's cooled completely. And if you get 13 slices, it's two points. So like I said, that's with the all-purpose flour. She's a dense loaf. And I did put it in the recipe builder, which I will link. In the description box was so if you're on the diabetic plan it might change because of the bananas the applesauce i think that's it yeah so let's give her a cut like i said i definitely don't think i'll get 13. i can get maybe more but two points i'm i think is a fair price to pay for a nice sweet loaf of bread now i will say some of the chips fell out when i was flipping her over so but maybe in hindsight, next time I'll put them inside. I kind of thought of it as an afterthought. So let's cut into her. Remember, I used cassava flour because I was trying to make it gluten-free. There she is. She's very moist. I will say, I did add that little bit of yogurt because this flour is very dry. <laughs> so let's give her a taste. Mm-hmm, she's good. Definitely tastes the spice in there. It's fantastic. You know, I don't think I've ever made banana pumpkin bread before. It should be called harvest bread between pumpkins, but well, bananas really aren't harvest, but the applesauce, you could put some chopped apples in this too. Mm-hmm. That's tasty. Recipe we linked at dishwithd.com. We'll hook up with the written recipe. Two points per slice. I think it's a steal for something this is good. And I, and I said I use all the sugar substitutes. I don't miss. I think those bananas with that being so ripe were definitely extra sweet. So mm. that is good. That is really good. I hope you enjoyed this video. Well, surprise. If you did, give it a big old thumbs up. If you haven't hit that subscribe button, join us here at Dish with Deep, where we are making banana pumpkin bread on a weight loss journey. You too could be eating this. Yep. Take little tweaks like that, and you'll be having delicious two-point bread, too. What a great afternoon snack with a cup of tea or coffee. Could you make it in muffins? Sure you could. You absolutely can. So if you're a muffin person, or if you're a person that like wants to freeze it because like, you know me, this is a lot. But I do have men living here, so they'll definitely go through this. But I can even slice it, wrap it, and freeze it like I did with the Grace's Oat Bread. So always think about that. If you want to freeze something like this, 
do it in slices. I wrap it in saran wrap and I put it in a freezer bag. When I want to slice, bring it out, let it thaw and have at it. So that's also a, could you put icing on this? Of course you could. Of course you could. A little cream cheese glaze would be fantastic. But, or even, or even a schmear when you eat it. Measure like a tablespoon of whipped, put it right on top. You know, because it's two points. You could afford another point or two. So I don't think you need a whole tablespoon too. Okay, I keep going on, on, on. So thank you for watching. Everything will be linked down below. Let me know if, like I said, if you plan on making this, I'd love to hear about it. So that is it. Have a great rest of your day. Surprise video. You're welcome. Bye-bye, my lovelies.